our previous lecture, uh, we have uh, studied the uh, constant coefficient linear system. In the case that the coefficient matrix A is diagonalizable, uh, that is A has an uh, linearly independent uh, eigenvector. Then the solution is given uh, by this expression. Uh, here we have eigenvalue lambda i and the corresponding eigenvector pi. Okay. Uh, so uh, for such equation, for such system of equation, to solve the systems, uh, the first step is to uh, compute the uh, characteristic polynomial uh, and uh, factoring into the multiplication of lower order uh, polynomials so that you can find the roots of the characteristic uh, polynomial that is uh, the eigenvalues. Uh, uh, so uh, because the matrix is diagonalizable, so the, uh, the even if there are some eigenvalue, uh, some equal eigenvalue, uh, you always have uh, an linearly independent eigenvector pi. So uh, Computing the eigenvector corresponding to every eigenvalue. So for lambda equal to 1 in this example, we have P1. And for lambda equal to 1 plus 2i, we have P2. Okay. Of course, you can also uh, compute the P3 corresponding to lambda equals 1 minus 2i. So uh, the corresponding uh, vector value function x equal the exponential of lambda t. Uh, multiplying the uh, corresponding eigenvector give you a solution and uh, in this way you can obtain the uh, three in, because we consider a uh, uh, three-dimensional system here so you have three uh, linearly independent uh, solution of course in this example the eigenvalue is com is complex so the the solution is also complex but we can take the real part and the imaginary part. Instead of using the complex vector function x2 and x3, uh, because we know that x2 and x3 are uh, conjugate, a pair of conjugate uh, uh, complex uh, vector. So their the real part and, and imaginary part are also solutions of our, uh, so our equation. Uh, this is a result of our uh, we, we have a result we have proved okay now in this lecture we will focus on more general constant coefficient linear system uh, the previous lecture concerns on the case where a is diagonalizable now we consider the more general a uh, uh, the characteristic polynomial uh, has some uh, multiple roots uh, uh, we have the uh, factorization of the polynomial. So uh, suppose lambda 1, uh, the, the different uh, eigenvalue of the metric A is lambda 1 and lambda k. Uh, and the lambda 1 is uh, of multiplicity S1. Lambda k is of multi algebraic multiplicity SK. Therefore, the polynomial can be factorized into uh, the multiplication of this k uh, single uh, polynomial, uh, uh, lambda 1 minus lambda to the power s1, lambda k minus lambda to sk. So uh, in this case, a might have less than an linearly independent eigenvector. Uh, so it could not be uh, uh, diagonalized. Okay, so uh, the previous method will not work for this system. Now we will uh, explain how to solve this system in this case. So uh, we consider the case for a uh, higher order the, uh, linear equation, a single equation, but a higher order system. We know that we also have a characteristic polynomial for this system. That is r to the power n plus a1 r n minus 1 plus plus a n minus 1 r plus a n equal to 0. Suppose lambda is a characteristic root of the characteristic polynomial of this uh, L1, okay? Uh, and the lambda is, uh, has multiplicity S. Then uh, in the study of chapter 4, we know that uh, this homogeneous uh, 
equation has a solution of this form. Because lambda is an eigenvalue, we have a factor E lambda t. And uh, because lambda is of times or multiplicity s, then uh, we have a C s, a constant, and uh, t to the power 1, t to the power s minus 1. Okay, uh, this is what we learned in chapter 4. So, uh, it is reasonable because of this reason, uh, because of compare with the nth order the, uh, single equation, uh, linear, single linear equation, uh, we expect that our system should have a solution of this form. x equal exponential of lambda it multiplying uh, some linear combination of the t, the power of t, uh, t to the power 0, t to 1, and t to si minus 1. But the coefficients, because we are, our x is a vector valued function, the coefficients must be vector. Therefore, r, r0, r1, until r s i minus 1. Okay, so we expect our system will have solution of this form. Okay, now we will justify the, and uh, we'll, we'll prove our this uh, observation. Uh, before this, we need some uh, important result from linear algebra. Uh, this is a lemma we will not prove here because this is, is a result in linear algebra. But maybe this result uh, does not contain in your linear algebra course. Anyway, uh, we, we, we don't need to know its proof, but we will apply the, this result. So. Um, we assume that the, consider the metric A, we assume that its characteristic polynomial can be uh, factorized into the multiplication of this, uh, these k terms. Then, uh, it has the factors, uh, lambda 1 minus lambda s1, lambda 2 minus lambda s2, and so on. Then, the first conclusion is that the kernel of a minus lambda i, i, s i, is precisely s i, okay? We know that for lambda 1, for lambda 1, the, lambda, the algebraic uh, multiplicity of lambda 1 is s1, but the geometric multiplicity, that is the uh, eigenspace uh, corresponding to lambda 1, minus less than s1, it always not greater than s1, it could equal s1 or less than s1. But it is really possible that it less than s1. But anyway, uh, the the power of this uh, operator or this uh, matrix a minus lambda i, then multiplying the identity matrix, then uh, multiplying this matrix to itself as i times, you obtain this operator or this matrix, then uh, our first uh, uh, conclusion is that the kernel of this matrix, the dimension of the kernel of this matrix is precisely the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue, uh, lambda 1. Here was the, what's the, the kernel. The kernel, in other words, the kernel of this matrix is the, consists of all the vectors making this um, all the vectors which uh, will be zero after applying this matrix. In other words, the kernel of this consists of all vector C so that satisfying this equation. Okay, this is the definition of a kernel we, we, we also mentioned in the beginning of this chapter. Uh, but I, I, I guess maybe you forget this, therefore I remind you that the kernel of this, the kernel of this uh, is precisely those vector C consisting of those vector C so that this metric multiplying this vector will obtain a zero. Okay. So this is the first, uh, conclusion of our lemma. The second conclusion is that the n-dimensional complex space can be, uh, decomposed into the direct sum of this k space, whether v1, v2, vk, are just the kernel uh, because the the kernel right uh is complicated in writing so we denote this kernel by each for each i we denote the kernel by vi then our space is the direct sum of 
all this V I, V1, V2, V N. Okay. So uh th this are the next this is a direct sign means that uh the vectors in V1, V2, v vector in different V I are linearly independent. And uh, of course for each V I uh, the V I the dimension of V I by the conclusion one, the dimension of V I is precisely S I. Therefore, we, in each VI, you have SI, you have SI linearly independent vector. That is the base of VI. Then, the base, you, you, you put the base of V1, that is S1 vectors, and the V2, that is S2 vectors, and the VK, uh, for, for the base in VK, we have SK, uh, vectors. Altogether is S1 plus S2 plus, plus SK vectors. All these vectors are linearly independent. Okay, and uh, they form the base of our space say n. Okay, this e altogether is uh, we have n uh, linearly independent vectors. Therefore, they span the whole space. Uh, okay, so we need this lemma in the proof of, of the main theorem of this uh, of this uh, video. Now uh, we will justify the uh, our conjecture that. For suitable R zero R one R R S I minus one, such X is really a solution of our uh, system of our linear equation. Okay, this is the lemma. Suppose R is taken from the kernel of this matrix. Ah, uh, the matrix is A minus lambda I multiplying the identity matrix. Then uh, multiplying which itself S I times, you obtain the a minus lambda i i to s i. Then this is an n by n matrix. Then suppose r is the an element in the kernel of this matrix. In other words, this matrix applying to r, you obtain a zero. Okay. Then such a vector valueless equation uh, explains the lambda i t uh, multiplying the the sum of this vector. Uh, this vector is from L from 0 to SI minus 1. Ah, SI is just the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue lambda i. And the, uh, the, the, each term, each term is, uh, t to the power L, L from 0 to SI minus 1, multiplying A minus lambda i i L, uh, divided by the L factorized, and then, then R, R is the vector. I is the vector taken from the kernel. Ah, then this vector, or you write in term by term, when L equal to zero, L equal to zero, uh, T to the power zero is one. And, uh, this matrix multiply, uh, of all the zero is the identity matrix and uh, the, the denominator is also one. Therefore, when L equal to zero, this is simply the identity matrix. Therefore, this is R. And uh, for L equal to one, the denominator is 1, but the numerator is t multiplying a minus lambda i i. So this is t a minus lambda i i multiplying r. And uh, at every term, the last term is when l equal s i minus 1. So we have t to the power s i minus 1 divided by s i minus 1. Then a minus lambda i i s i minus 1 power, this metric multiplying r. So uh, our lemma says that this vector valued uh, solution x is a solution of our this system a x prime equal a x. Okay, so uh, so this this uh, lemma give uh, provide us a concrete expression of the solution of solutions for our linear system in terms of the eigenvalue lambda i. And the corresponding vector r, r is any vector in this kernel. Okay. So once you have a metric a, you can compute the eigenvalue lambda i, and also you know that the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue lambda i, which is s i. Therefore, this matrix also know because s i could be observed and know. And then you can solve the, you can solve this equation. So this linear system of algebraic equation, you can obtain the uh, R, uh, okay, R is making this zero, 
that then I is a solution of this uh, system. So then you obtain then you obtain a, a solution of this form of our system x prime equal ax. Okay. So uh, we will prove this important lemma. Uh, the, the method of proof is very simple, just by computation. Firstly, we know that r is taken from the kernel of a minus lambda i i to the power s i. So that is this is zero. And then we expand the right hand side. We can write it as a minus lambda i uh, multiplying the identity metric and then a minus lambda i i again, but to the power s i minus one. Okay, we write SI by SI minus 1 plus 1, and the, the, for the plus 1 term, we move it here. Okay, then we expand this, consider this as a vector, we expand this uh, multiplication. Uh, so we obtain the A multiplying the, multiplying this, this is written here, and then lambda I multiplying the vector give you lambda I, A minus lambda I, I, SI minus 1 R. So that is to say, lambda i multiplying this, then r equal a, a minus lambda i, i, s i minus 1 r. Okay, you simply move this term to the left hand side, you obtain this equality uh, that will be needed in our later uh, computation. Now, uh, we taking take the derivative of x. We take the derivative of x. So x is the x is this uh, function multiplying this uh, this vector. So uh, the derivative of, of x equal the derivative of e lambda i t multiplying this vector plus e lambda i t multiplying the derivative of this vector uh, by the product law. So the derivative of e lambda i t is lambda i e lambda i t so the first of the term is lambda i e lambda i t then copy this term here copy the sigma sum here this is the first term of the derivative of x then the second term you need to use e lambda i t multiplying the derivative of this term the derivative of this term since this is a finite sum you can Taking derivative term by term. So taking derivative term by term, uh, we only have a t. We taking derivative which is back to t, but t is only appear here. So the derivative of t l is l t l minus one. So the l can be cancelled with one l on the uh, at the denominator. Therefore, we obtain the t l minus one. The a to the power l. Uh, copy and then the denominator because one of the factor l is cancelled from the uh, l in the numerator by taking derivative therefore this l uh, factorized become l minus one okay so uh, this is the derivative of x x x uh, then we collect the we, we move the take the common uh, factor e lambda it outside of the sum we obtain this uh, result. So this result, we see that the the terms to be added on this two sigma summation is quite similar. Okay, it's quite similar. But uh, the range of the the range of the uh, summation uh, index L uh, is different. Here is L from zero to S i minus one. Here is L from one. Okay, error from one because the term uh, this this summation is taken from uh, differentiating this. Okay, but for l equal to zero, this is constant. Therefore, uh, the the term corresponding to l equal to zero uh, vanishes. So the difference after differentiating this term, the sum of this term uh, range from one to s i minus one. So for the second summation, the range of l is starting from one. So we need to uh, write them uh, in the same uh, range uh, so that we can add them, combine them together. Therefore, we we change the uh, index just like what we did in the uh, study of serious solutions of the ODE. Uh, so we can write this by 
but let L minus one be a new uh, be a new arrow. Therefore, the new L for, for the old L from one to S I minus one, the new L is from zero to S I minus two. So, uh, we copy everything here except replacing the L in this dimension by a new L that is running from zero to S I minus two. So we obtain the, this result. Ah, uh, everything are uh, as before, but the second dimension we change the range of the summation index from 0 to SI minus 2. Therefore, the error, the new error is the old error minus 1. So this is the T error minus 1 become T error. And, uh, and the, the error here become error plus 1. And then the error here, error minus 1 here become error. So we get this result. Okay. Ah. Now uh, we can we can uh so the the second summation here is from zero to s i minus two. The first summation is from zero to s i minus one. Therefore we need to write the, the term corresponding to L equal s i minus one separately. So we write the, the term for L equal s i minus one. We obtain the lambda i t to the power s i minus one a minus lambda i i L equal S I minus 1. So this is the term. This is the term in the first summation corresponding to L equal S I minus 1. Then the, the, the summation, the remaining term is from L from 0 to S I minus 2 and can be combined with the second summation. So, uh, but before combining, we we'll write it down. So uh, this is the, this is the, the sum from 0 to S I minus 2. This we, we, we write the term corresponding to L equal S I minus 1 separately. Then the first summation split into this, the sum of these two terms. Then we copy the second summation here. Copy the second summation. Then we can combine these two summation. Okay. Next we combine these two summation. The first of the term, uh, copy here. And the second term is a summation for L from 0 to S I minus 2. Um, the result is that uh, lambda i lambda i t l we write t l separately. Both term has t l. Therefore, we we move the common t l out. Then we have lambda i uh, and also a minus lambda i i l also out. Okay. Therefore, when you have lambda i multiplying the identity matrix plus because this is to the power L plus 1. We already write L power here. Therefore, we, we, we still have an A minus lambda I I. Okay. So combine these two summation, we get this result. Now, uh, this result of the lambda I I cancel. Therefore, we only have A here. This is simply A. So we get uh, this term also copy. And then this term, uh, this, this, this is A. We move the a out of the summation. Uh, we have t l a minus lambda i i l. Then multiplying the vector r. We 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 multiplying the vector r inside the two summation here. So r is also here. Uh, okay, we have the r uh, multiplying here. And uh, in the first uh, for the first term, we switch the two real number, the coefficient t s i minus one and the lambda i. So we obtain this result. Now. Now using our uh using our previous computation, lambda i so uh the lambda i a minus lambda i i s i minus one r uh, is just a a minus lambda i i s i minus one r uh, uh, okay uh, let's go back to have a look uh Lambda i multiplying the power s i minus 1 acting on r equals a then a minus lambda i i s i minus 1 acting on r. Uh, using this equality, uh, we can replace this by a, replace this, replace this by a, a minus lambda i i s i minus 1. Okay. Then we copy the next uh, the second summation here, copy, copy this, uh, here. 
So we see that uh, what, what we uh, discovered. We see that this this term just this is precisely uh, this when l equal s i minus one. So this term cannot be absorbed into the summation, and the range of the summation is now from zero to s i minus one. So we have copied the exponential lambda i t here, and then uh. And then uh, a ah uh, a also copy out ah uh, a also move out of the summation. Then what the remaining uh, summation is l from zero to s i minus one ah uh, okay uh, so you put you move this a the common a out of the summation. Then the remaining this term is precisely a common term here for l equal s i minus 1. So the range of summation could add another term, the last term, l equal s i minus 1. So the range of summation is l from 0 to s i minus 1 here. Okay. But what's this? This is precisely, uh, sorry, the exponential multiplying the metric, multiplying this vector, uh, the, the exponential is a uh, number. The number can Go through the metric A, you can, this equal, you use the exponential, that is this coefficient number, to multiply the vector first, then uh, multiply the metric A, okay? It can be switch, uh, multiply, multiplying by a metric and by a number can switch, okay? So we, 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 we get this result. But uh, this is just our x, okay? This is just our x, so we obtain the ax. So our this computation tell us that for our x given in this way, for x given here, the derivative of x, that is x prime, x prime equal ax. So this x is a solution of our uh, system, x prime equal ax, and uh, this proof that this lemma is correct okay so the computation is a little long but uh, uh, principally it is very easy uh, you just be careful to uh, to deal with the index the, the summation index for example we we raise the index by uh, by one so that the range from one to s i minus one become zero to x i minus two Okay, so this is a trick, and also uh, uh, an important an important point in the computation is that this term can be replaced by a a minus lambda i. This term, ah, uh, this lambda i multiplying this can be replaced by a multiplying this. Ah, uh, this is the condition. This is due to the truth of our r, ah, uh, because r is uh, taken from the kernel are taken from the kernel so that we have this result. Uh, therefore, this follows by this. Uh, as a consequence, we have this. Therefore, uh, the, the, the step where lambda i is replaced by a is justified by this. Uh, this is very important in our this computation. Uh, otherwise, you could not combine these two together. Okay, But because the lambda i can be replaced by a, so you can replace it by a and then move the a out and the, the this term this separate term can be absorbed into the our summation okay now uh, we have proved this lemma this lemma tell us that given a vector in the kernel this kernel is precisely our our vi okay given the vector from vi uh, we can We, we, we can obtain a solution in this form of our linear system. Okay, now uh, we want to find all the linearly independent solutions of our system. Okay, uh, we want to find the fundamental set of solutions so that we can uh, use their linear combination to obtain the uh, general solution of our system. Okay, so this is the theory. Suppose we, I, we know that we are the dimension of vi is si is the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue uh, lambda i okay then 
we take a base vector of vi that is hi1 hi2 hi si here the sub index 1 2 si is the numbering of the base vector and the, the super index i means that uh, all these vectors corresponding to eigenvalue lambda i okay so for each such for each such hi1 uh, we can uh, obtain a solution of the system uh, xij here H, xij is precisely the solution uh, we obtained in the lemma for r taking replace this r by our hij but uh, hij belongs to vi as the base vector of vi it belongs to this kernel so since hij belongs to the this kernel so this such x is a solution such x we denote by hij in this theorem Okay, this is precisely the x in the lemma for r equal h i j. Then, uh, g, the range of g is 1, 2, 3, s i. So that is g belongs to this set. I use the bracket s i to denote the set 1, 2, 3, s i. Uh, this will save some space. So for, for, for g in this range, uh, we obtain the such solution. All these are SI solutions. So we put them for every i from 1 to k, we have SI solutions in this form. Then we put them together and we, as a column vector, we obtain a metric PCT. PCT, the first column is x11. Uh, and the first group of columns is, uh, x11, x1, s1. Uh, this is the, uh, solution, uh, obtained from v1, uh, from the base vector of v1. Okay, and similarly, this is the S2 solution uh, obtained by V2, and uh, finally, this is obtained by Vk. So, every column of this metric is solution of the, our system. This is uh, justified by, by the lemma we just proved. So, the, the conclusion of this theorem is that this matrix is a fundamental matrix of the system. So we need to prove that this matrix, uh, that all this, uh, this matrix is inevitable, or all these vectors are linearly independent. Ah, uh, if you can prove the in, uh, the inevitability of this matrix, then it will be a fundamental matrix because every column is solution. Okay, but uh, uh, this PCT uh, is uh, uh, obtained by uh, solution. So. Uh, we know that positive is invertible if and only if it is invertible as some t. If for some t, for example, for t equal to zero, this positive is invertible. Then for every t, uh, the positive uh, is also invertible. This is uh, the basic property of a long scale uh, de determinant. So the determinant of positive is the long scale of these n solutions. Okay. So the long scale can be identically zero or never zero. So if S and T, the long scale is not zero, then long scale will never be zero. So that is the, the determinant of PCT is never zero. So PCT is, uh, the column vector is linearly independent. So this, these solutions are the, forms the fundamental set of solution and the PCT is the fundamental matrix. So, uh, since we know that every columns is solutions of the system. To prove that it is a fundamental matrix, we only need to show that PCT is invertible at some point. Of course, we consider t equal to zero. So when t equal to zero, xij is just hij. Look at the explanation of x. x is the exponential multiplying this vector. But this vector, when t equal to zero, from the second term, Every term are zero. Every, every term is zero except the first term corresponding to L equal to zero. And uh, when T equal to zero, this is also zero. So X is just, X zero is this vector R. X zero is this vector R. Go back to our situation. X IJ zero is the vector H IJ. So the, the metric P C at zero is this matrix. The column vectors are H I G. Uh, so this is the base of V1. This is the base vector of V2. This is the base vector. These are the base vector of Vk. 
And uh, by our lemma, by our lemma, uh, we know that uh, v1, vk, they are the sum is the Dirac sum. Ah, uh, that is they intersect on the, uh, the origin. Okay, the intersection of this space uh, uh, is the origin. Therefore, uh, therefore you take the uh, base of v1, take a base of v Take take the uh, base vector from v1 and the base vectors from v2 and the base vectors from vk and then putting them together, uh, all these are n vectors. They are linearly independent because this is the next sum. Okay, so uh, we know that these n vectors are linearly independent. So pc zero is invertible. Then, as I said before, for every t pc t is also invertible. So this is the fundamental matrix of this system, proving this theorem. Okay. So uh, uh, the solution obtained in this uh, satisfies this relation. As I said before, in the proof of the of the theorem, we need this. Then uh, suppose given a vector eta in the space, uh, eta could be written as the sum of some h, where the hi belongs to vi, that is the kernel. Ah, because the space, the whole space is the direct sum of v1, vk. So every eta in Cn could be written in a unit way as the sum of the hi, where hi is taken from vi, that is this kernel. So our, uh, if we consider this initial value problem, then the solution is just uh, this. Okay, the solution of this is initial value problem is precisely this. Ah, because every every such vector, since h i belongs to v i, so this vector for every given i, x e lambda i t multiplying this sum, then multiplying this h i is a solution because h i belongs to v i. Okay. Then uh, there are some. This x is also a solution of the system, and uh, we, uh, we 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 prove that it satisfies the initial value problem. Putting t equal to zero, this vector when t equal to zero is precisely h i. So the right hand side when t equal to zero is the sum of h i, but the sum of h i is eta i. It is eta. So we know that x. Is eta when t equal to zero. So such x satisfying the our linear system and also satisfies the uh, initial value problem. Therefore, it is the uh, solution of the initial value problem. Okay. Now, uh, so this this theorem provides us a very simple way to solve uh, the uh, system of linear ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients. Even if the metric A uh, is not diagonalizable, okay, we can solve this system. Now we, we will show you an example. Uh, we consider this linear system, x prime equal ax, where a is this matrix? A is this matrix. So we, will, we want to find the general solution of this system. How to do? So first step is to uh, compute the eigenvalues. So we need to uh, write the characteristic equation. That is the determinant equal to zero. So the, the determinant of a minus lambda i is this determinant. Expand this determinant, you obtain the, it is minus lambda minus two, uh, lambda minus one square. So we see that lambda equal to two and the one are the eigenvalues of this matrix and the one is a eigenvalue uh, of multiplicity two the algebraic multiplicity one of the eigenvalue one is two that is s1 the algebraic multiplicity of lambda one s1 is one s2 the algebraic multiplicity of lambda two equal to one s2 is two okay so this is the first step the second step uh, we consider lambda 1 first. For lambda 1, we need to find the solution of this to, to find the h. Uh, this h is the eigenvector of lambda 1. Uh, or you can you can also uh, look at this way. 
lambda 1 equal to 1 means s1 is 1. So the h we want to solve, is, we want to find is the kernel of a minus lambda 1 i. Okay? You can also uh, apply this lemma. Anyway, because the algebraic multiplicity of lambda 1 is 1, so the s1 is 1 here. So uh, the resulting x is e lambda 1 t multiplying the eigenvector. Okay, so uh, so solving this system, that is, uh, you can compute a minus lambda one i. Lambda one is two a minus two i. Uh, the matrix a mi minus two i. You see that it is this matrix. For example, this element multiplying uh, sub uh, minus two is one, and the zero minus two is minus two here. Okay, so this this system, writing in component wise, is this system. And you can solve, find the solution of this system. A unique, the, this solution, uh, the kernel of this is one dimensional. Uh, we only have this vector. This vector is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 equal to 2, corresponding to this eigenvalue. So, correspondingly, our system has a solution. x1 equal exponential of lambda t, that is 2t, multiplying this vector. Okay, so this is the first solution we found. And, uh, and since h1 is 1, 1, 0, so the vector is 1, 1, 0. And uh, you multiply e 2t in, inside every component, you obtain this. Uh, of course, our solution uh, should be column vector. But uh, to save space, I write in lower vector, which uh, transport here. Okay, so for lambda 1 equal to 2, we are done. Uh, we have found a solution. Now we consider the complicated case, lambda 2 equal to 1, which the, multi the algebraic multiplicity is not 1 anymore, it's 2. So for lambda 2 equal to 1, since the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is 2, so we need to take a vector from, we need to take a base vector, we need to take a base vector from V2. V2 uh, sorry, uh, uh, yes, V2. V2 is the kernel of A minus lambda. S, S, S2 is 2. Okay, so, so we need to consider the kernel space of A minus I. Lambda is, lambda, A minus lambda I, but lambda is 1 here. Our lambda is 1 now. So, A minus lambda I is A minus I, but we have a square. Because of the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is 2. So we have a square here. So we need to find the kernel space of this matrix. This matrix, by direct computation, this is just this matrix. And uh, it is easy to see that the kernel is two-dimensional. Because the range, the length of this matrix is 1. So for 3 by 3 matrix, if the range, the length is 1, the kernel is two-dimensional. Okay? And uh, the base vector is 1, 0, 0, and uh, 0, 1, 1. Uh, as you can check, this matrix multiplying h21 and h22, you obtain a 0. So we have two base vector. This also justified that the dimension of this space is 2. Okay, s, s, s2 is 2. Uh, now, for each of these vector, we applied our, this, formula to write the corresponding solution of our system okay so uh let's go back so our s s2 here our s here is two therefore we only have two term uh l equal to zero and l equal to one l could not be uh, greater or equal to two because s2 s2 is s is two 2 minus 1 is 1. So the sum is L0, L1. Nothing anymore. Okay? So our solution is exponential lambda t, that is et. This is corresponding to L equal to 0. And uh, this is corresponding to L equal to 1. Uh, compare the formula. L equal to 0, t0. The matrix 0 power means identity matrix. And uh, also, when L equal to 0, this is 1. Therefore, when L equal to 0, this is precisely the identity matrix. So, 
the first term here is the identity matrix. Then plus the second term. The second term is T multiplying the matrix. Okay? So T multiplying the matrix. Then H2I. H2I is then we, we multiplying it inside every term here. That is H2I plus T and this matrix and, and H2I. Now uh, we substituting H2 1 into this expression. H21 is this vector. And uh, this matrix A minus I, you can compute A minus I. A minus I is just this matrix. Then multiplying T and then multiplying the H2I again. So this is the second solution. H2I. Ah, okay. And uh, you can write simplify this expression. You obtain the H2I H21 is just this vector. So this is the solution uh, corresponding to H2I. This is the solution generalized from, from the first base vector of uh, V2. Uh, okay. Now we consider the second uh, solution. That is the solution generalized from H22. Uh, and uh, by similar argument, it is identity matrix plus T A minus I, then multiply H22. Then this is ET H22 plus this as before. And then you substituting everything inside this expression. H22 is 0, 1, 1. So you have 0, 1, 1 here. And uh, T A minus I, that is this metric. So this is the same as before, T A minus I. Then multiplying H22. H22 is 0, 1, 1. So this gives us the solution corresponding to H22, denoted by X22. And you simplify this, you obtain 0, ET, ET. So we have already obtained three solutions. Uh, X21, H22, and the previous, the previous X1 here. Okay? So putting them together, we obtain the general solution. That is the linear combination. Uh, this is C1, X1, plus C2, X21, and C3, H, X22. Okay? So this uh, is the uh, demonstrate how to apply our theorem to find the general solution of our linear systems. Okay?